Welcome back, Advancing with Watercolor. Today our subject is tonal values. And what I mean by tonal values basically are the lights and the darks that we use in putting together our painting. Uh, this is particularly useful when creating and uh, making a dramatic center of interest. Um, today we're going to be using the motif of the restaurant at the Musée d'Orsay in Paris, a wonderful old uh, railroad station that's been reappropriated and made into a museum, and they preserve some of the grand architecture uh, in the restaurant area. And you can see it specifically in the windows and uh, the uh, chandeliers, everything that's present. This is a tonal study, a study basically done in one color that I used to kind of um, warm up with or get my bearings with. And in this you can see that I've used lights and darks, a, a lot of darks in the foreground to establish my center of interest with the uh, figures and the waiter. So I'm going to start with a, a light application of water, a little bit of a light blue to it, uh, but I'm creating sort of a rough brush, mm, brushwork to help me to soften out uh, the drama that's up above uh, with the windows and the moldings of the windows and such. Um, I know pretty much how I want to proceed through the painting in terms of lights and darks because of the tonal study that I did before, the uh, single value study. I do this a lot because it helps me to understand uh, how to effectively use the lights and darks to bring out my center of interest, to create a sense of drama, especially with an interior, the um, contrast that we bring out in light and dark is, is um, created by um, using sometimes the white of the paper as, as I am today in contrast with this uh, strong dark application. And what that means especially for us as watercolorists, is being able to use the darker range in our palette, meaning color with very little water and um, often color that's close to, if not right out of the tube. So these two colors that I've begun with are Bird Sienna and Ultramarine Blue. I'm mixing them primarily on the paper. And I'm uh, my goal here is to get a, fan, a feeling of the windows receding along the back wall and to capture the um, the decorative mullions that we see in the windows, the big archways, the way they're broken up, broken up with verticals and horizontals. To me that's one uh, distinguishing characteristic and one actually um, beautiful aspect to this building yeah, that carries a sense of grandeur and um, the light that's coming in is is absolutely beautiful. Then below um, I'm using a, a warm mix, a warm gray made of the same two colors favoring burnt sienna and creating this pattern of tabletops. Um, and if you look at the photo that I've uh, placed in the beginning of the video, video you'll see that it's not quite structured like this. This is rather a, an invention um, based on, loosely based on what was there, but I've added one or two more um, tabletops and I've eliminated a large awkward looking um, island of dishes and, and so on that was in the lower left. And um, since I've been doing uh, numerous cafes, this um, this uh, way of composing has become very natural for me, putting tables where I want them, where, they, where, they, where I make best use of the light, and then I'll add people to that. I'll put the people, um, the important figures against the light, the less important figures will kind of be uh, in the shadows. And I'm starting with a pretty strong mix of uh, burnt sienna, because I'd like these figures to have a certain glow at the end as though the light is coming from uh, the right and back. I'd like to see a little bit of a glow 
to them. So this warm tone in the beginning is helpful in setting that up. Uh, painting figures in this manner, and what I'm, I guess I should say in this setting, is um, easier. We don't have to worry as much about legs. <laughs> even arms are kind of not even present. So we're establishing torsos and heads, basically. And I guess the trick is to make them feel natural, uh, have them, a couple of them engaged in a conversation or an interaction, and uh, the rest kind of take, takes care of itself. So I continue to work on these figures, bringing out um, some of the features that I think will be important. As typical in Paris, our waiters are wearing black vests and have white aprons and white shirts and just perfect uh, to kind of create this timeless scene. Uh, this could be, you know, 100 years ago, but it was it was literally last year. So I'm I like that aspect to these these uh, cafes, especially in Paris. And I continue to build the figures out, connecting them behind the table, under the table. Um, there's not a lot of nuance that I'll add uh, after the figures. I'm going to keep this one rather simple. In the black and white study, I experimented with a chandelier and didn't really care for the way it came out, so I might forego it in this one. Uh, it doesn't mean I'll stop trying, but at least for this demonstration, we'll just work with the interior, the light, and a play of figures at tables. When you're thinking about tonal values for your subject, it's helpful to have sort of a, an idea of the range that you want. In some cases, that range is very minimal. In other words, your lightest light and your darkest dark are rather close together. An example of that might be kind of a foggy scene uh, in, the, in nature or in the city where the darks are not so dark and the lights are certainly muted. And this helps to create that quiet, sort of soft feeling that we feel um, with fog or rain or other weather. And in the case of a brightly sunlit day, that extreme is going to be greater. So the lightest light against the darkest dark is going to be very far apart. And that sort of contrast it is great for communicating bright light. In the interior, um, I'm taking some liberties. I've used a gradient wash primarily in the background, uh, which is not evident in the photo. It's more of an interpretation, <clears throat> but I feel it's a necessary one. Otherwise, all these figures would uh, disappear against a dark background. We'd barely see them, except for the ones standing or sitting in front of the windows. So I've gone very dark up above and I've kept it rather light uh, as it approaches the figures. This is a strategy and also the, gr the graded wash that I used in the background uh, helps to create a feeling that light is sort of bouncing back up into the walls and this creates, this further creates that idea of luminosity. So you see now I'm connecting things uh, through the lower right-hand corner and putting a wash over the tabletops. These, these are reflections of either the, the walls or the figures seated at the tables. Straight, the reflections are coming straight down and um, again, they kind of condense the, the light on the tables, uh, which helps to lead the eye and this is an important aspect of using these bright lights amid all of these mid-tones and darks is that kind of like stepping stones through a pond um, that lead the eye back into the painting or that surround our center of interest and uh, form a, a bit of gravity uh, to that area. By the same token, uh, we kind of smooth out or uh, wash out certain areas so that they're not as obtrusive. For example, this 
the figures on the left hand side in the final rendition I'll probably put another wash on the tabletop and below to kind of quiet that corner. It's a good strategy in painting uh, when you're thinking about composition to consider the corners. You don't want any one corner to really um, take too much en energy away from your center of interest. We're actually looking at the finished painting now and I put some highlights onto shoulders and heads and other places where I feel uh, highlights were needed to reflect the light from the right hand side. Anyway, an exercise in using tonal values, lights and darks, as expressed through color, but with a uh, thinking of how the lights and darks work to effectively portray the subject.